In this video, I'm going to show you Power BI Group by using three easy ways. The first one using the query editor, the second one using DAX, and the third one using a little bit of magic inside Power BI. Now, of course, we are going to compare these three at the end and see which one comes out at the top. Uh, but we also have a bonus tip for you on how you can use the group by and the query editor to debug some query issues. Hey, I'm Avi Singh, a Microsoft MVP and a best-selling Power BI author. And if you want to become a Power BI pro, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you are notified whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions. So we'll jump right into the Power BI desktop for this in the query editor. So let's uh, go ahead and this is using our famous AdventureWorks model, by the way, to download this file and any other file in any of my videos, all you have to do is go to learnpowerbi.com slash download. And we're also going to put that link in the corner uh, and down in the description below. And that will let you download this file and follow along or examine it later if you wish. So again, let's go to the query editor. And the, and the table we're going to use for this example is the budget table. So for the budget table, you can see it's a pretty simple table with the budget amount by uh, product category, subcategory, product name, month, and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to group by and to give us budget by category. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and reference this because I don't want to mess up my original budget table. So I'm going to uh, right click and say reference. And I'm going to rename this table as budget by year, right? So I just, uh, uh, Oops, I just uh, renamed that in this uh, name part over here. And once I renamed it, I'm also going to right click on this and move it to a specific group just to just to keep it organized in, in uh, the queries in this section. So budget by year. But again, I haven't done anything yet. So again, our intent here was to group it by year. So for that, I'm going to go on the transform tab up here and then choose group by. So let me do that. So I'm going to click group by. And I think the column that's selected, I had category selected is selected by default. And here, uh, the next thing that I would look at, so ignore the basic and advanced for now. Uh, group by category sounds right. But then I want to examine the operation. So if we go in here, I don't want to count rows, I really want to add up or sum the budget. So I'm going to choose sum and then specify the column budget amount. Don't forget to give it a good name. In this case, we're going to call it total budget. And I'm going to hit OK and watch what happens from all those rows. Now it's summarized or grouped by category. And I'm getting the answer for the total budget by category budget. Uh, oh boy, I, I messed up. I changed the name to budget by year. Okay, budget by category. That's what we're doing. Now let's go back and do budget by year. So I'm going I'm to repeat similar steps. I'm going to right click and reference. I'm going to give it uh, a good name. And this time I do mean budget by year. And I'm going to move this to the group just so I keep them organized inside my query editor. Now I come back here. Now I don't have an year in this table right now, but I do have the month. So what I'm going to do is under transform, I'm going to look under the date and time because that's the kind of column this is. And in date, I'm going to select year. So great. So that's a year. I'm just going to rename this as well, just so I don't get confused later on. So now it's an year and now I'm ready to say group by again, same action group by year, similar action. Oops, not that I wanted to sum off the budget amount. And we would call it total budget, hit OK. And there we have it budget by year. But let's do one more thing, which is budget by year and category. So again, similar steps, right click reference, budget by year and category. Oops, uh, uh, typo there category. I got that. And I'm going to I'm going to keep them organized in that group by and come over here. Instead of this, I actually want the year. Rename it. And 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 here, if you go click transform and group by, you're going to have to switch to the advanced one, right? So you're going to have to switch to the advanced one. Uh, oops, let's try that again. 
So again, click on group by and make sure you switch to advanced. Now what advanced lets you do is it lets you specify not one, not two, not three, but as many levels of grouping as you need. So if I wanted, I could say, yep, we now group it by category, group it by subcategory and so go, keep going depending on what your table was. So I'm gonna remove the subcategory from here, year and category, and again, I want the sum of budget amount. So we'll get that total budget. Hit OK, and voila, we have budget by year and category as calculated using the query editor. Now before I go on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this table back into our model, but I had promised you the bonus step on how I use this sometimes to debug query issues. Now sometimes if I'm working with a complex query, then you know, as you can see in this one, there's a lot of different operations going on. Now, Often, based on, especially when you're merging tables and such, you want to be very careful about the number of rows. Typically, if you're working operating on a data table, you don't want the number of rows to suddenly change. So in this case, I'm just going to make something up. Let's say, uh, let's say in this case, what we're trying to do is go to our data table sales and we're merging it to our product table and bringing in color. So I'm gonna say merge with the product table and hit okay. And in here, let me just expand and just get the color. Now again, so this is just, uh, you know, kind of a, something that I thought of, but in, in a real scenario, often it's a, it's a quite a bit complex query. But the key thing that I want to understand and confirm is that the number of rows didn't change because if the number of rows changes, something bad happened. One of my assumptions didn't hold. Maybe the product key isn't unique in the product table or, or if I ended up with less number of rows, maybe I didn't do the merge right or something like that. So I want to validate it. I want to verify that. And usually what I do is I go before the step when I did a merge and I say group by insert and I'm going to go to the advanced tab again but this time I'm going to delete the single grouping so there's no grouping at all and just leave it to count rows because that's what I'm looking for and hit OK. Now this should give me the total number of rows and I can do this step again so, so once I know the total number of, ro number of rows here I can uh, so I'm going to delete this step you can repeat this step after your processing and maybe you have like 10 20 30 steps and you can repeat it maybe at the crucial points and then use the query editor to cross check to make sure that the number hasn't changed if it has changed then throw some kind of error and basically stop the refresh from happening so that's my bonus tip for you so um, let me show you what this end result is going to look like with the tables we loaded using the query editor all right so my tables have been loaded here and if you wanted to uh, you could create uh, tables or list out of it. So this is my finished file. You can also download the finished example uh, using the same link uh, that I talked about. And here you can see I've just placed the same thing. Uh, you know, so this this table shows uh, budget by category and uh, the next one here uses the fields from budget by year and the ones over here uh, both of them use you uh, are I'm using to display the budget by year and category. So Again, no surprises there. Whatever we saw in the query editor, that's what's being loaded in the model. Now let's uh, go to our next step uh, and do it by DAX. Now what I did want to say was that if you are starting out in Power BI and you would want to understand how the query editor works and how DAX measures work, which I'm about to show you right now, kind of step by step and, and build you kind of your first dashboard, your first Power BI model, then I'm going to link to a Power BI digital tutorial in the corner here and down in the description below and go ahead and access that. All right, so now we have, uh, okay, cool. So this is, we're gonna do the same thing using DAX. So the budget by category by year. So for that, what I'm gonna do is, is go to the modeling tab and click new table. Now, if you, if you have been through my tutorial, you know that I love measures. I'm a huge fan of that. But in this case, we're not using that one. We're saying a new table. So I'm gonna click that button and then I am gonna type a DAX expression, but this DAX expression is gonna be different than measures, which return only a single value. This is gonna return a table. So here we go and I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna prefix everything by DAX. So DAX budget by 
category. That's the first one that I think we had done in the query editor. And I'm going to use a function available in DAX called summarize columns. And I'll just say I want it by category. So let me just select a product category and and say so now the next thing that I need to specify is a name and expression pair. So the name, what do I want to call this, uh, this, uh, uh, this column, uh, I want to call it total budget, right? So that is the name. And you can see this highlighted in that in that help thing over here. And then what well, what is expression? How do I calculate that? And for this, we can use our budget measure, which budget measure, which is a simple sum of budget amount. And you can examine that when you download this file. And that's it. I'm going to hit enter. And let's see what that table looks like. So I'm going to go to the data view. And if you notice this DAX budget by category, this looks uh, identical to our budget by category we built using the query editor. Again, there's some formatting differences, but otherwise it's calculating the exact same numbers. So now let's go ahead and calculate really quickly. Uh, let's go do new table again. And this time I'm going to say budget by year. Oops, uh, budget by year. Oops, okay, great. And I'm going to swap out product category with a calendar year. And I'm going to define the next one as well. And then we're going to go quickly examine them. So the next, the last one we defined using the query editor was budget by year and category. And we're doing the DAX version of that. So here, uh, I'm just going to add calendar year and uh, I'm going to keep the product category so by year and product category and the calculation is the same uh, so now let's go back to the data view so this is the one we were looking at earlier this was the DAX budget by category let's look at the next one DAX budget by year again no surprises it looks uh, as we expected as the query editor version and this is the last one which is DAX budget by year and category and again let me switch to the finished example where what I've done is I have uh, displayed uh, fields from these table in just a list over here right so now are you ready for the third step which is doing it using a bit of magic so let's go back to our model here that we're working on and uh, let's go to the relationship view here and unfortunately it's created some automatic relationship let me clean that up and we'll uh, pick up from there all right so I, I did clean up the relationships and cleaned up uh, this view but I also created a simple uh, view uh, or a layout as it's called in this new relation uh, model diagram view which is just shows the budget table so budget table is our data table in this case and it has these two lookup tables now here we're going to use the magic of relationships so we don't have to do anything in the query editor we don't have to do anything in DAX we're so ignore all of the tables that we have created using DAX or the query editor we're just going to go to our original budget table and the budget is as I promised just a simple sum of budget amount but we can grab this field put that in a list let's say and let me let me make the size a little bit bigger and then we're gonna just go reach over and pretty much we can pick anything in our lookup tables including the columns that we had decided so I can I can go to my uh, product table that's what we had started with and I can say "Ooh, I would like to see this by category so I can just drag and drop category over there and there it is those are results by category now let me make a few different copies of this so here I can say uh, I want to see by the calendar year uh, okay not do not sum the year so don't summarize perfect and then I can I can go over and change this to a matrix and again drag and drop so I already have here and I would like to see uh, maybe maybe put category in and rows in here but, but again uh, well that does not look pretty for uh, for the AdventureWorks data set and let's do one last thing and add a plus icon here perfect but you can see that we didn't really need anything special to do anything special oops I, I, I did it by category in here uh, let's do the opposite perfect I don't have to do anything in the query editor really if you want to group by something 
and you have the data organized in this shape of data table and lookup tables, you can group by or slice and dice it any which way you want. Now, if you want to understand how that works step by step and walk through a more extensive example, again, a uh, link to our tutorial in the corner. Now, let's come back and we had promised that we're going to compare these three scenarios. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, let's say that we changed our minds or her users did and they said, well, this is great, but I actually want to see it by year and quarter. And you know, and, and we can, all we have to do to fix that is just simply drag and drop. So I'll remove category there and I'll go back and uh, grab the quarter uh, from there uh, and just put that in the columns. And there we go. Now we have it by year and quarter. Now, so this is easier to do. All you're doing is kind of clicking and selecting what the user asks. You can have them sitting on the side. But of course, in the in, if you did it using Query Editor and DAX, you would have to modify each query or the specific query. Now, this goes deeper than that, though. So uh, just for fun, I had, uh, uh, let's undo these changes, and I had added a slicer for quarter, right? And I want to show you that if you add a slicer for any field and so forth in the lookup tables, so this is the one that used the magic of relationships. So here, if I click on Q1, it's totally responsive. If I click on Q2, it's totally responsive. If I select Q1 and Q2, it's responsive. So this basically, this plays with the rules of Power BI. If you connect tables this way, and operate using the magic of relationship, everything is gonna be dynamic, everything is gonna be responsive, and it's gonna update based on the selections that you have in a slicer or uh, the cross filter you use using other graphs. But the same filter, if somebody were to add uh, in here, and I think I'd hidden it, so uh, there we go, the same slicer, if you had used DAX, you're gonna notice that it doesn't filter, it doesn't impact it at all, because DAX generates a static table, not a dynamic table, and the same thing with a query editor, none of it is gonna respond. And again, you can go back, as, as an author, you can go back to the query editor, you can go back to find the DAX measure. But folks, the biggest difference is that solving something in in either in the design time or runtime, right? So if you use the query editor or the DAX approach, you have to solve it at the, the design time as an author. Now, as an author, you may not precisely know exactly how the user is gonna slice and dice it. And of course, if you're publishing this online, then it's possible that hundreds of users can connect to your model and create hundreds of separate reports. You cannot predict in advance, are they gonna like to see it by year and quarter, year and quarter by category, or the thousand different possibilities which may exist in a realistic data set. So in general scenarios, it's more powerful to just leverage the magic of relationship, which automatically allows you to slice and dice or group by data any which way you want, rather than query editor and DAX. Now, there are scenarios where it does make sense to use group by and query editor or DAX. If you have run into one of those, I would love to hear from you in which scenario you use that and why it made sense. So let me know, and until next time, power on my friend. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.